Uh, hi, my name is Chi Hun Jung. I'm from South Korea. I live in New York. I'm an abstract painter and a photographer. Can you tell us a little bit about your life? Where did you grow up? I grew up uh, in two uh, different small towns in South Korea. And it's a really rural area. And then I grew up there uh, until I went to college in Seoul. Where have you lived around the world and why did you choose those places? I lived in Korea for most of my life until 2008. In 2009, I moved to Boston, Massachusetts for my graduate study at Boston University. And then I lived there for three years. And I, I moved to Boston because I wanted to experience different cultures and different languages and I wanted to meet different people from all different countries in the world. So that's the main reason I went to Boston. So I'm always interested in like different culture and you know the relationships and religions and everything. So that's the main reason I lived in Boston. Then I uh, I lived in Buenos Aires, Argentina for almost six months. Uh, for learning Spanish and learning tango and for my photography project and then I came back to Boston and then finished my degree and then I moved to New York back in January this year uh, for my art. Where did you learn to tango? I first learned tango in Buenos Aires but actually not true. I, before I went to Argentina I knew that I would go to Argentina so I took a tango class at BU. I thought it was tango. But there's a tango, two different tangos, one international tango and Argentine tango. I thought I learned that Argentine tango, but I realized that what I learned at BU uh, wasn't Argentine tango, instead it was instantly international tango. <clears throat> because a woman who asked me to dance tango in Buenos Aires she walked away in the middle of the first song. <laughs> so I realized that my dance, my tango was an Argentine tango. Yeah, so my, I can say Argentine tango, I first learned in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. Why did you choose to learn tango as opposed to other dances? Uh, the main reason was I went to Buenos Aires. Uh, so uh, I researched about the country, about the city, about the culture, and then I found that tango is uh, tango is from uh, Argentina, uh, Buenos Aires. So I took another like swing and swing classes <clears throat> my school, but I uh, decided to learn tango because I knew that I would go to Buenos Aires, and then I actually did it. We know that you choose to um, do your artwork with your feet. So we want to know, why did you choose to use the non-traditional method of painting with your feet? Oh, this, first I had a great time in Buenos Aires and I learned so many beautiful things about our human relationship in tango. Uh, while, I was, while I was experiencing a tango in Buenos Aires, I wanted to express that feeling and emotion and in all the spectrum of intimate love in tango in my artwork. So I actually tried uh, with first a photography, and, but it didn't work. I felt, <clears throat> I didn't feel right about it. And then I tried to paint with my hand, I tried to paint tango figure or abstract, but what I want to express in my painting was about that, that love, that emotion, that feeling of intimate relationship in tango. But I couldn't express that with you know, traditional method, which I had to bring my memories and my experience to create the images. So I was thinking, <clears throat> Okay, tango is, for me, it's like experiencing, it's loving. And then I want to ex uh, express that 
aspect in my, uh, my artwork and also the process of art uh, creating an image is also <clears throat> is a beautiful art for me. So I was thinking one day suddenly, what if I dance on the canvas while dancing tango with my feet? Because I, I made, so I made the canvas a milonga where people dance tango, milonga. So I decided to dance with my colors and sometimes with my partner while uh, dancing tango with music. Describe the tango as an intimate dance in which you get to listen to, wait for, understand and love your partner. Who was your inspiration that inspired your work, Tango Intimo? I was inspired by all the tango dancers. We call tangueros, who I have met and had danced before. And also I'm still inspired by them. And uh, they are the, uh, the biggest inspiration of my painting, Tango Intimo. Uh, and, and especially when I was in Buenos Aires, I met so many people who claimed that the tango had changed their life. They had uh, pains and they have problems in their lives, especially emotional and relational problems. But uh, by dancing tango, they could overcome their uh, you know, difficulties obstacles uh, and also I met a couple of people who said that oh I came here just for traveling for a short trip but I decided to leave here for the rest of my life because I love tango and then I don't want to miss it and then I just want to leave here and uh, I and then I love people who are dancing tango here and then I love the tango and then that draw me a question about what is tango and then why people they uh, fall in love with tango and then never can they get out of it who are your in artistic inspirations there are uh, so many art artists actually um, uh, I like I like Jackson Pollock uh, and his action paintings, especially to see his emphasizing that for him it's actual painting it's more significant than the result of the painting. So for him just action itself it's meaningful and significant for his art. So I went to Museum of Modern Art like three years ago for the first time and then I met encountered his painting gigantic, huge painting, I was like, wow, this is so monumental, this is, I was overwhelmed by his expression, but at the same time I was thinking, wow, if that is art, if that is art, probably I can try, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's why uh, his art, his images, his artwork inspired me to do my art, because for me or so, experiencing on canvas, dancing, and all my body and soul, it, that expression of my body, it's very important for my paintings. And also, I was impressed, highly impressed by Kandinsky, and then his color choice, color composition, it's just, I think it's brilliant and it's amazing. And then I was standing by one of his paintings in the Guggenheim Museum. I was like, wow, this is amazing. So those two huge artists that I got inspired and also my roommate is also an artist, he's a painter. And he, he uses uh, Prussian blue, a lot of blue colors and I really like his choice of blue and then so I try I try to use some of his favorite blues in my painting and then it came out very well and then so and then I also inspired by the nature and then all some things so that but I can say the Jackson Plot Kandinsky and uh, my roommate Glenn are the, the 
artist that I got inspired more the most. Your artistic talents expand beyond painting and into photography as well. Can you tell us a little bit about your passion for photography? I carry my camera every day, every, everywhere I go. And then I, I especially love the unposed snap photography. So I love people. I love people, I love relationships. My theme, ongoing theme is, is human relationship with the divine, with the nature, with other beings and with oneself. So then um, I see the beauties. I believe each person has a beauty, the unique beauty. And I, I just love seeing the beauty of life on the street and then wherever I go. So I want to take the moment of their beauty with, with my camera. And I first took a picture um, when I went to Costa Rica for my uh, backpacking trip. And then I accidentally met my college friend, who was totally accident. I was like, wow, and then he, is a, he's a, he was a photographer. And then he asked me, do you, do you have a camera? And I said, no, I don't have any camera. Okay, it doesn't make sense for you to travel without a camera. And then he handed me one of his camera and said, travel with this camera and then bring it back to me when, you, when you're done. So I brought the camera to go to the city called La Fortuna, which means fortune. That was fortune. I took so many photos with this camera and then there was, I was fascinated by the fact that I could take a moment of the, how to say, a person's life, their beautiful moment. Since then, I always take pictures of people. I measure which amount of area that I want to use as a palette, that I want to pour paint. So I make a boundary with a, with a tape. This is blue tape, and I use every day. So kind of I make So this area is going to be my palette, and then I dance. I dance around like here, like this. But later, I take the tape off, the, off, and then I cut here. So this actually area is going to be actual artwork. So, and then I before I start, if uh, I already decide paint the paint colors, I use for example. I, Or painting like with a painting knife is kind of make this Then I play the music and I go on canvas and I start painting. But uh, before 
I can show you how I, my feet moves, but before the most important thing is that I need to put this one on my feet. This is a, a barrier cream, so to protect my skin, you know, so it's easier to get rid of paint after paint. Sit down and use spare cream for my feet. Just so I take care of my feet very well. <laughs> I don't put hand cream, but I put foot cream. <laughs> In order to choose colors, I listen to music a lot. I first need to choose music, obviously. And I listen to music a lot. I did a lot of colors to be like. I use my notes and I put on my headphone and listen to music over and over again. And kind of like to sometimes I write my reflection about the painting, like this is about number nine. And I write this <laughs> and I measure the canvas and decide the size of the painting and kind of this is my sketch of uh, the tango moves how can I my my steps and so these things and this is the color study under the song so I do use color pencil and sometimes watercolor and I do color study like this and the emotions that I want to express and then after I decide, decide, I decide the color, I line up the colors that I want to use and then if I prepare, if I do a lot of color study and if I if I'm very confident about the color choice, color composition, color choice and then I could be more free on canvas because I don't have to worry about how, how the color is going to mix I could just be free and then I just dance on the canvas so I enjoy a lot dancing and yeah that's that's how I create my painting and so those this painting is very I mean for me it's unique because I use electronic music the second song is more like kind of like this so you move this movement of this this is second layer mm -hmm. So you you see the like a short mark movement is in the Hmm. Something like this. But you see the longer movement like like something like this. Yeah, something like that. So let's create the whole mark of uh, it's it's all based on the music. So when you listen to when you see the painting and then if you listen to the music, the painting makes more sense to you. Yeah, for each painting, I usually use four songs because when you go out to dance tango at a milonga you dance four songs with your partner we call it it's one tanda and after one tanda there's a, some break time like 15 seconds or 30 seconds and then you change your partner and then you dance another tanda with another partner so that's why I decided to use four songs for each painting because it shows each painting shows a relationship. Uh, it's a unique relationship with me. So that's why I chose choose four songs for each painting. But sometimes, if the music is too long, each music is too long, they play three musics for one tanda. So this one I use electronic music. So it's the song. The traditional tango music usually about three minutes, but this one each song is about four to five minutes. So I decided to use 
I need three songs. So, and then I do the color study a lot, then I dance on the canvas. It doesn't take long time to actually paint, but it takes a lot of time to prepare for each painting. Uh, this painting is number 13, and I start this painting at Korean Festival. The first layer, and if you see the background is the kind of black colors, it's I did in, uh, at the Korean Festival in the public. So uh, then that one is I used the music from the French band called, uh, called La Tipica Santa. Their music is a fusion, tango, and jazz. So and it's kind of shows uh, this painting shows about the. Uh, I can say more like tango is more like dramatic. You see the like the deep depth of the emotion and feeling, but at the same time, when you, when you the jazz is more like you know, kind of like bouncing and moving. It's kind of more free, and so I kind of mix those music together and then create this painting. And uh, yeah, so I work the first and second layer at the Korean festival. Manhattan, and then I brought this uh, to home, and then I uh, finished this painting. This painting is I performed uh, performed at Dadugo uh, Ballet Studios. It's a tango studio in Manhattan, and I performed my painting with um, with I guess it's with my yes with my uh, dance partner. Her name is Marina. And uh, I dance with her. It's about the uh, joy of milonga, especially winter milonga. So the theme of this painting is about joy of winter milonga. When you go out to dance tango, it's just outside is cold and freezing. But if you go inside, you, you feel really hot because of the passion and then the deep emotions of the, the, the tango dancers. And it's very joyful. So you get sweaty or and so uh, this shows the the joyful moment of uh, dancing tango and uh, uh, especially during the winter so and then I did a first layer at, uh, at the tango studio a studio for uh, as my performance and then I finished this work at home at my studio <laughs>